Hi guys, it's Mrs. Schacht here, and I'm here to discuss the annexation of Texas. Understanding what happened in Texas in the 1830s is crucial to understanding why the United States goes to war with Mexico in 1846. So this is the contextualization, if you will, of that very event. Now, what's important to note that Mexico had achieved its independence from Spain in 1821 and had invited American settlers to come to Texas. Um, this was such a popular invitation that Americans significantly outnumbered Texans by 1830. And by 1835, there were over 27,000 Americans and 3,000 slaves. Many Americans thought that Texas was a fantastic new area um, directly to the west of the, you know, cotton producing southern states. So they thought it was a great way um, to expand cotton production. This does not sit well with the Mexican government, who is anti-slavery and would love to see the Americans convert to Catholicism, excuse me. So this starts to cause a lot of tension between the Americans in Texas and the Mexican government. One of the first and most prominent family members or families, I should say, in Texas was the Austin family. So if you're familiar with the fact that Austin is the capital of Texas, that's where it comes from. The leader of Mexico at this time is General Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana, who is a very colorful, kind of quirky character. Um, he serves as the president slash dictator, if you will, of Texas, excuse me, Mexico, for 12 um, different terms. Um, he actually lost one of his legs in a battle and held a funeral for his leg which ironically enough is on display at the Illinois Military History Museum in Springfield, if you guys ever wanna check out his leg. But he wanted to make sure that the Americans in Texas were following the rules and knew their place. And when he created a new constitution that would have alienated the Americans in Texas, um, there was a call for war against Mexico by the Americans in Texas. Um, there were kind of two factions. Sam Houston led a faction of men who believed in resistance and war. There are more Americans in Texas. It should belong to us. Um, Stephen Austin called for negotiations and peace. Um, but Tex the Americans in Texas did inevitably go to war with Mexico. They, believe it or not, had a very organized army and navy. And one of the most famous incidents took place at the Battle of the Alamo in 1836, which is in present day San Antonio, Texas. Um, the Alamo was surrounded by the Mexican army. Um, all of the men inside, as well as many prisoners later, were executed. And this became kind of a rallying cry for the rest of the Americans in Texas to remember the Alamo and avenge the deaths of some very brave soldiers like Davy Crockett, Jim Bowie, who has a knife named after him, and William Travis. So they continue to fight and they are successful in achieving a Mexican surrender after the Battle of San Jacinto. This causes Texas to declare itself an independent entity. They call themselves the Lone Star Republic. They adopt a flag in 1836, and they name Sam Houston as their leader. So the next natural question is, now that Texas is an independent nation, should it become a U.S. state? And this was a question that plagued the American government for the next 10 years. Um, as you can imagine, there were many people who saw the annexation of Texas to be one that would damage the very fragile balance that existed between slave and free states. On the other hand, you had many who encouraged annexation and encouraged expansion and new land and a new market for a cotton producing economy. President John Tyler, um, it says here he was a Whig, you know, he was actually originally a Democrat and then was basically kind of shunned by the Whigs as well. But he assumed the presidency after William Henry Harrison's death about a month after his inauguration. 
And Tyler worked very hard to convince Congress to annex Texas um, throughout his presidency. Um, he did a lot of the legwork. Um, he unfortunately was unsuccessful. And when the Democratic Party for the election of 1844 ran candidate James K. Polk, he also ran on a pro-Texas platform. He was nicknamed Little Hickory or Young Hickory. So he is a protege of Andrew Jackson's and is very much pro-Texas annexation and pro-slavery. Um, he runs against, here we go again, Henry Clay. Henry Clay once again loses. And James K. Polk assumes the presidency. It was only, you know, weeks before he assumed the office that Tyler had been able to get a treaty through Congress with a simple majority vote. So that Polk really kind of had to um, bring it home as he became president and convince Congress and the Texans to sign the treaty. And so Texas officially becomes a state on February 19th, 1846. Of course, um, as you can imagine, this does not bode well for the Mexican government and there will be cries for war um, in 1846 and very shortly thereafter, the Mexican-American War will break out again in direct response to the official annexation of Texas. Hope that helped you guys out and I hope you have a great day.